The Clash of Kings by George R. R. Martin. So a while back, I infamously within my own channel community here gave a fairly negative review to A Song of Ice and Fire or better known as Gang of Thrones, Gang of Thrones, Game of Thrones altogether. And I've recently gone back and started rereading the series. I burned through the first book rather quickly and now I kind of slowly drew myself through the second book, A Clash of Kings. And with more experience under my belt with grim, dark fantasy. After reading books like Joe Abercrombie's and The Poppy War and a couple others, I've come to appreciate the balance Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire finds within the grim, dark fantasy subgenre a little bit more. Because yes, there are horrible people in this world. Westeros has some real bastards in it and some literal bastards. But what George R.R. R. Martin has managed to do is find a balance between, yes, these people are evil, yet they're still human, and that's something I really do appreciate. There's people balanced between the absolute worst and kind of middling light. No one's really all good, but that's realistic. There's horrible circumstances going on, so pushed to the edge, everyone's going to be willing to do some morally questionable things. It's about a fight of survival. Even people like Jon Snow, who are supposed to be our golden boy, can be pushed to do some questionable things, and I really do like that. It's an admirable aspect of the series, and it came much more apparent to me here in the sequel to Game of Thrones, A Clash of Kings. What I also really enjoyed is while the first book, A Game of Thrones, built the setting of this world fairly well, A Clash of Kings is really filling out the introduced environments to a much greater degree. It's no longer just a name and a place. There's good vibes and feelings for each individual location that you're exploring through these characters' eyes. I will disagree with some people and say it's not the greatest world building of all time. It's just well above average and falling into the really good category. Westeros feels real, and each new environment has a very solid feeling to it. That being said, it's not exceptional on the level of Middle-earth or on the true legendary development. Where I find A Song of Ice and Fire to be strongest so far is with individual characterization and personalities. Different people, different perspectives really lend a whole new tone, a whole new outlook on various events throughout the series, depending on who really you're following the most at any given point in the story. It's also quite amazing how this book can make you back people in the first book you never thought you would. The who's right, who's wrong kind of falls on situational basis, and I enjoy that as well. Not everyone's gonna be on the evil side of everything, and not everyone's gonna be on the right of everything. People make mistakes, people make bad decisions, some people or enjoy those bad decisions, and this story is just really begging the reader to find out where do you fall, who do you ally yourself with in this rough, rough world. That's, in my opinion, the real focus of A Clash of Kings. Well, the first book did a really solid job of setting up this world. A Clash of Kings focused much more heavily on the alliances, the allegiances that people within the story are finding, and where you as the reader will go. And of course, comparing and contrasting it with the show, I have to do here as well. I like the show quite a bit. I do consider it some of the most incredible television in terms of scale and scope I've ever seen. The acting is overall pretty good, and the storytelling is great. And I don't really see why people are turning on the show. There have been a couple episodes that now that I'm reading the book again and going back through it and certainly appreciating it more this time, I spot the difference between the story in the book and the story in the show, even though it's a little foggy for me. But they've never made a choice, so far at least, that really makes me mad. I know there's an infamous episode that I've already seen myself that has one choice that is pretty, pretty ridiculous in terms of a timeline issue, but again, it needed to happen for story purposes, so I'm not completely just jaw on the floor, oh my god, it ruined the show. No, it's just one, that's annoying kind of aspect of the show so far. But pulling it all back to the story that takes place within A Clash of Kings. For a long time, I've said I really enjoy it when an author makes you hate a villain. And it might be kind of too big a statement to make, but arguably no one in the history of fantasy does that that George R. R. Martin does. He did it really well with Joffrey in book one, and he does it whew, on a whole nother level in book two. The corruption of power on good men is already pretty extreme. Watching the corruption of power on, on a real SOB is is just so unpleasant. <laughs> Overall, I'm gonna give A Clash of Kings a happy I'm rereading it so far, 
out of 10. I will continue to read the Game of Thrones books a little more slowly and carefully than I will with my average review, just because this certainly does deserve a closer examination from myself as a reviewer, because it is a mainstay of the entire genre in our pop culture right now. That being said, I hope you guys liked the review. Uh, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here, and let me know where book two for A Song of Ice and Fire falls in your ranking of the books so far. And have a great weekend, y'all. Peace!